Welcome to our show, Ask Your Doctor, where we get on board with renowned doctors. So for today's show, we have Dr. Damodar Garu, who is an MD in internal medicine. So this is basically like a, the continuation of our series. Uh, and right now, we're in the part where we'll be discussing one of the most important uh, subject, which is nothing but pelvic cancers. So without any further delay, let us welcome Dr. Damodar Garu on our show. Welcome back, doctor. I hope you're doing well. Hi, Shivani. I'm doing good. Glad to be back. Hope you are doing well. Yes, I am doing great, doctor. So, uh, doctor, today we're actually talking about something very, very important and crucial. It's nothing but the pelvic cancers. Uh, even though a lot of people actually know about pelvic cancers or whatever, it's pretty common out there. But I don't think so. Uh, people go in detail about it, which we will be going in today. So do you want to start with the basic introduction of what exactly is pelvic cancers? Sure. So pelvic cancers or the cancers which are, you know, organs located in the pelvis. So when you go to the abdomen anatomy, so the lower part is called pelvis, you know, from the you know, pubic bones onwards where, you know, for females, all the like, you know, um, reproductive organs like ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, vagina, and the cervix. Cervix connects, you know, the vagina and uterus, okay? So these are the parts for women and for men, you know, basically scrotum, like the testicles, the prostate, you know, of course, we miss the bladder. Bladder is common for both sexes. And then we have, uh, you know, these uh, testicles, they have, uh, you know, tubes, you know, which connect to the urethra. And then, you know, you have uh, bladder, of course, then, you know, you have the pinnies. So these are for the men. So basically, we will go today, you know, to discuss in detail about uh, female, you know, pelvic organs and cancers to continue our oncology discussion. We'll start with the anatomy, like we'll go, you know, from the vagina, you know, and then cervix, then uterus, then ovaries, okay? And the most important cancer is, you know, cervix, you know, which is the most common cancer after breast cancer and also most common cause of cancer-related deaths after breast cancer. And it is very important, especially for our population, especially Indian population, where the cancer, like, you know, like, if you compare all the cancers in the world, one female out of five females is Indian origin with cervical cancer. So there is a lot of, uh, you know, information and education we need to give and share to our viewers and general public, which will help, uh, you know, to you know, overcome this uh, situation, you know. So let's start with, uh, you, know, you know, if you have any questions, you know, should. So basically most of these cancers are etiology-wise related in the same situation. Like, you know, you know the etiology we discussed so many times. And uh, some of these cancers, especially a lot of research happened, especially the cervical cancer. It's very interesting to know, you know, like you can pre you can prevent the death and, you know, you can take care of the cancer in very early age. Uh, doctor, I personally wanted to know, um, because most of this is actually involved below the pelvis, uh, I before we get in detail with everything, I kind of wanted to know what are some basic symptoms that people can kind of, you know, uh, think that, okay, this might be a sign of one of the uh, cancers below so can you just suggest, uh, can you just tell us that people can, you know, maybe look out for some symptoms and then we'll go in detail about specific cancers. The cervical cancer and the ovarian cancer, they may not have any symptoms, uh, symptoms should have you. And uh, most of the time, ovarian cancer, by the time present ISR is too late. You know, symptoms start ISR already cancer spread down to you. So on the way, it's very important, even cervical cancer also. So the reason we focus is here to catch those cancers early because a lot of times there is no symptoms. Of course, there is symptoms with, uh, you know, uterine cancer where, you know, you can have bleeding, you know, 
లైక్ ద ఫీమేల్స్ గో త్రూ మెన్సెస్ కదండి సో ఫర్ జనరల్ పబ్లిక్ యు నో యు హ్యావ్ ఎ మెన్స్ట్రల్ పీరియడ్ ఫర్ ఉమెన్ ఫర్ ఫైవ్ డేస్ త్రీ టు ఫైవ్ డేస్ ఎవ్రీ మంత్ రైట్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ మంత్ యూ ప్రొడ్యూస్ ఫీమేల్స్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ వన్ ఎగ్ రైట్ సో ఇన్ ద మిడిల్ ఆఫ్ ద సైకిల్ సో వేర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఫర్టైల్ పీరియడ్ so that's where you you know get to conceive babies like if you have you know you know sperm and uh, if you have you know you know intercourse so obviously so the ova goes produced in the ovary and it goes to the uterus and when you know the semen which carries the sperm you know they meet you know in the uterus and you know you conceive right so that's how it happens you know fertilization so basically to go back to our topic the symptoms wise if somebody has menses in between let's say like you know before the period like usually you get periods every four weeks but somebody having periods in the early like in the mid part or sometimes the earliest uh, you know some of the symptoms could be you know you may get uh, you know bleeding after sex yes after it occurs Uh, so post quarter uh, doctor i am so sorry to cut you down but i kind of wanted to know what kind of age bracket can number one uh, they be and how common is it for the indian uh, indian women to experience right so uh, each cancer has different uh, you know age group right so usually the ovarian cancer it begins like after 45 45 to 50 years and even you know even the um, you know the uterine cancer is also usually post menopausal but cervical cancer is the one which can happen at younger age okay so that's why cervical cancer is uh, you know is very important because it has various etiology we go into the risk factors for cervical cancer so basically there's so many risk factors like uh, you know of course you know infection we discussed right when we started general cancer discussion infections contribute to about 15 to 20% of cancer and here the virus called a human papilloma virus it's called hpv there's so many varieties of uh, viruses but the most important subtypes are 16 and 18 which are cancerous and this you know is sexually transmitted you know basically a lot of uh, women can get uh, you know infection but not all of them go into you know cancerous lesions yes. just some people can get over it percentage of people with cancer almost 90 plus percent of them can have uh, human papilloma virus so it's very very significant uh, development and research why i'm telling you is because if young adults not only female even the boys if they can take the vaccine it's called hpv vaccine so if they take the human papilloma virus vaccine you know then you are protected from this cancer right so before yes. uh, you know sexual life it's better to take when you are you know like maybe you know when you are 14 15 16 like that so so it is available but you can also have later in the life also Yes, is, and uh, also useful. Yeah, uh, now that uh, we're kind of done with the cervical cancer, I want to get into the uterine cancer. Um, can you go ahead with that, doctor? What are again some common symptoms? What actually happens in this type of cancer? So, sure. before going to uterine cancer, uh, cervical cancer, we have to uh, little bit give more information because it's very common and very important. Because uh, especially in Indian uh, women. you know the social stigma right social stigma is big in india so that's the main reason why you know women like in the world like uh, every fifth female who has cervical cancer is a female from india you see what i mean that's a very very high uh, you know number of women developing cervical cancer in india so the social stigma is that's where we have to focus because a lot of times in india you know we all from the cultural background it's also called cultural stigma so even the mother is hesitant to you know speak to the daughter about uh, sex right 
and uh, even I, I don't think fathers also talk to sons about sex because they feel embarrassed. It's a cultural stigma, but it's very important, like to get over this because because you know the sooner you tell them the importance of vaccination and you know kind of uh, educate them about safe sex because the the etiology is important in terms of cervical cancer. Most of the cancers in females are interlinked, but the etiology when you go to, so basically it's uh, multiple sex partners at early age. You see what I mean? So if your partner is a risky guy, you know, who has STDs, then you are also at risk. Very important thing, right? So also, People who have multiple partners and risky sexy behavior, they are more prone for this viral infection and cancer. So very important. And also screening, you know, screening. If women get the pap smear, you know, pap smear, there are two screening tests. One is pap smear and one is, uh, you know, HPV testing. So these two are the very important, crucial screening tests. You know, and it has to be started at age 21 and age one year old. So you've got to start screening. And this has to be repeated every three years until you reach age 50. And in high-risk people, maybe more than that. So it is a very simple test. You know, screening is very important because if they find your pap smear abnormal, it's called pap smear, right? So what is pap smear? Basically, they take cells through a brush, you know, it's not painful or anything. And they put it on the microscope and they check. And when the cell, you know, shows those early cancer changes, then it's like mammogram again, like not all mammograms positive or, uh, you know, 100% cancer. So pap smear is also the same. Like when you say it is abnormal, you know, a lot of people are scared and they keep calling doctors. but but it is again you have to confirm it through biopsy like you know you go and look with the colposcopy they call and then you do you know so the reason why i'm telling you is this is like very advanced uh, research if they find those atypical cells then you can cure it you can save the lady from going through all the process if you don't diagnose early she may not become pregnant because they may have to take the entire thing called uh, Radical hysterectomy. If the cancer is spread, then they may have to take the uterus, the cervix, even tubes and ovaries. So that's why it's very important. And also, you know, sometimes it can spread, you know, before you diagnose this. So that's why screening 21 years, you know, very important for like, you know, all the women, all the, you know, because nowadays everybody is going to school, right? So everybody has to go through screening, simple test. Most of the time it's free. You know, in a lot of places, screening tests are free because the government wants to, you know, tackle this problem, you know. Everybody should get vaccination, HPV vaccination, okay? Everybody should go for screening. And that way we can control the, you know, cancer early and, and also the death, okay? So this yes. is very important for cervical cancer. The HPV vaccine, uh, you know, it has kind of become like a government issue where they are actively telling women in India to get their HPV vaccines uh, ASAP and, you know, saying the importance of it. I think a lot of people are actually getting educated now. So I think that is a uh, part of uh, cervical cancer that we, come, uh, you know, kind of covered. But I really want to get into the other kind of cancer. So let's start with sure. the uterine cancer now, doctor. Yeah, so basically uterine cancer again, like, you know, you know, the anatomy of uterus, right? Because that is, it is called the womb, where the babies are, you know, grown. And, you know, so once the fertilization happens, the, you know, the baby goes there. So it has like endometrium, myometrium. So endometrium, you know, the bleeding, you know, the menstrual cycle bleeding comes from endometrial, you know, uh, the layer because that's where every month it you know sheds off as you know blood and then recycle happens. So that cancer is pretty much risk factor for most of the time the similar kind. But here it is mostly postmenopausal cancer, you know. 
So the age group is not like uh, cervical cancer, but it is after menopause, postmenopausal, and symptoms. You know, basically they can have uh, intermenstrual bleeding. That is like they can have if people have menses still, they may have extra bleeding, post menopausal bleeding. Like you know, after usually after fifty years, most of the ladies they go into menopause, right? So you know, if somebody started having bleeding, then it's worrisome. and uh, then they have to immediately you know get to the doctor and then you know it can be biopsy they could do ultrasound and you know so it's you know basically it's one of the you know you can do initially surgical treatment and you know they can you know go ahead and remove the uterus and then post uh, you know surgery depending on the age and comorbid situation they can do additional treatments like radiation chemotherapy i think ovarian cancer is again also one of the most common cancers that have come into limelight i feel like i feel like i've been hearing about ovarian cancer here and there so can you please let us know exactly what exactly is ovarian ovarian cancer and what kind of symptoms and age bracket can uh, people get uh, ovarian cancer in right so ovarian cancer is again another um, you know very um, very important one because most of the time it is diagnosed after the cancer is spread so that means to answer your question symptoms may not be present initially until you find the cancer or konta mandi kismat ante lakkunnallu edo reason ku pote edo test chesthe edo vastadu kada incidental finding ante so so the lucky one sometimes uh, can be caught you know initially if they go for some reason then they had a scan then obviously they see something in the ovary and then they can biopsy and you know get the diagnosis but usually you know again ovarian cancer is also another there are tumor markers and you know long time ago last year we discussed about the tumor markers i remember so there's some tumor markers called uh, alpha fetoprotein ca125 ldh so they can be elevated and uh, you know usually ovarian cancer is again after 45 years age it's in you know, a later part and um, you know usually symptoms ante already cancer develop ayina em ayindante rendu ovaries untayi left ovary right ovary untayi so both of them are you know you know attached to the fallopian tube and when cancer happens you know it can compress other structures you know around like you know it can cause pressure symptoms like people may start having you know konsam dinangane they may think like oh i'm full and they may have nausea they may have pain you know all that uh, sort of symptoms you know so then they will start losing weight and they may start their belly you know like distended and you distend it start because they are fat because the fluid you know ascites antar kada manam discuss chestunna so the cancer involves peritoneum it starts accumulating uh, fluid it's called ascites so it's called malignant ascites manam ascites la liver failure la discuss chestam kada that is not malignant but this is malignant ascites and the cancer related swelling then if the cancer spread to you know lungs they may have trouble breathing it goes to you know liver they may have jaundice possibly so depending on where it goes bone pain when it spreads to bone so but uh, again the treatment is pretty much the same you know depending on the staging if you can find it early you take it out and then you follow up you know so that's how it is you know yes i think you have just few minutes more so i want to get into another cancer and also some faqs doctor so let's get into the vaginal uh, cancer now uh, can you just give a basic introduction and what kind of age bracket again they come in uh, so that i have a couple of faqs that i really want to cover sure sure so vaginal cancer you know basically each uh, you know vagina has a different lining okay like uh, the cell line you know and so pretty much risk factor or same like cervical cancer you know the yeah, of course the diet we discussed you know most of the time it's you know all these similar like cancer risk diet like you know more of uh, you know preservatives and uh, more of uh, 
you know red meat type and uh, more of uh, you know infections same like hpv infection is again their risk factors is again multiple sex partners and you know uh, you know with sex with a you know risky partner who is a druggy and who has infections and std and you know obviously so again here also you know the earlier the diagnosis we can you know you can go through and target and remove the cancer and then you can do radiation and chemo but but you know vaginal cancer again it could be age wise it can be kind of middle age you know you know so so pretty much the same treatment and same etiology so symptoms wise they may have bleeding okay like post coital bleeding you know or sometimes they may have uh, just bleeding you know irregular menses so and you know when the symptoms when the growth happens they may feel lumps you know and uh, so so it is you know immuno you know people with uh, immune compromise they may have infections too you know so, um, so all that um, you know again it's the same you do the examination you know vaginal examination then you take the cell to the biopsy and determine what type of cancer and again all these cancers we forgot about the genetic uh, part you know some cancers run in uh, like you know families and some genetic uh, you know testing is available so people who have uh, some cancer may run together like colon cancer breast cancer ovarian cancer and you know these are all in a separate group you know so if family has that kind of situation they have to go for genetic testing to detect early you know and to take uh, you know more precautions and i think doctor with that we'll have to conclude today's episode because we did kind of uh, uh, cover a lot uh, i might get uh, into new epicures in the coming episode uh, because even the coming episode is very interesting we'll be talking about some uh, uh, pelvic cancers for um, uh, in men So I think without any further delay, let us end today's session and let's meet in the next session only. Thank you so much, doctor, for tuning in. Thank you so much for the viewers for tuning in. You are watching Sakshi TV with me, Shivani Raj. Mm-hmm.